and yet another uh, cold cathode um, video. Um, my apologies to MD who's not really into cold cathode lighting. It's just I find it quite interesting. So um, I, I, I tend to buy bits and pieces and play about with neon and stuff like that. This is a standard, uh, you'll recognise it if you put the lid on. This is a standard uh, cold cathode driver, often supplied with the kits uh, for PCs, where you get a couple of tubes, and the tubes have a cold cathode tube inside a plastic um, tube, and then it's got two square sections to facilitate putting double-sided tape on and sticking it onto the case. And inside the, these, it's just um, they tend to just pull apart, it's a friction fit. Inside is the tube with one wire connected to the end of it. The other one uh, run up uh, to the side with a, I don't know if they use two layers of heat shrink or just one, but then attached to a thin wire which then runs along the full length of the tube which also actually helps it strike in the first place and goes up to the other end. Now these thin tubes, with neon, the thinner the tube, the harder it is to light it. Basically the higher the voltage uh, per inch or millimetre or whatever you want to say, the, the, it just requires overall a much higher voltage to light it than say a big fat tube like this. So um, I shall just, uh, actually I'll, yeah I'll just stuff this together so I don't end up losing the bits and break it. I shall just stuff it back in. So this little uh, power supply is designed to drive two of those and it splits the Power output, it's only got one secondary winding, but it splits it between the two tubes using two capacitors. Uh, notepad, notepad, notepad. Here's the notepad. So, if that's the high voltage output, um, actually, uh, yep, the, it is split to the first tube, and then there's a capacitor. And then it tends to actually reverse that arrangement uh, just for separation in the circuit board and have the capacitor at the other side. And that's basically, you know, how it's um, configured. And in terms of how, the, um, how it's actually connecting to the output terminals, you've got the first of these connectors, and there's the other connector, and it tends to basically have one out output from the secondary going to each of these connectors and then there's a capacitor connected from that one down to that connector and then also there's a capacitor connected to that connector and that effectively puts the two capacitors in series of the tubes. And it's a shame they do this because otherwise you, you wouldn't have to split it open and do a little modification. You see the current it puts out uh, is okay for these tubes. The thinner the tubes tend to look a lot brighter uh, because of the sort of higher voltage drop across them for any given current. But when you use uh, one of these tubes, these bigger tubes, on just one of these outputs, it tends to look fairly... I mean, it lights. You can drive two separate tubes off each output, but it looks just a little bit uh, dim. Um, however, you can make a modification, which basically involves... Oops. The secondary winding... Uh, putting the capacitor in series of the output to that and then taking the other capacitor and bridging it across that one to increase the current. So that end means that those two capacitors now pass effectively twice the current of one channel. And I have done that, um, if I can find it, on... Oh, merci. On this one here. What I've done here, I removed both the connectors, um, kept one of the capacitors in place, and then just tacked a lead across the back of the, the one that was already there. And this now can drive twice the amount of current to a single tube. So I'm just going to hook it up to a neon tube. And this is two feet of neon. It's a bit more than 12 millimeter, I think, this one. I'm not sure what the diameter of that tube is. 14 millimeter, not 100 percent sure. It doesn't even look that big. Um, and I uh, have to get the crocodile clips. So that's lighting at a good brightness. That's actually quite a nice brightness. And the power supply is running at 12 volts, and it's drawing just over 500 milliamps. So that's actually pretty good.
I'll just turn one of the, the floodlights off so you can actually see that you know it's, it's actually quite a nice bright uh, light it's putting out. And again, it's ideal for the mercury and argon too. You can drive a little bit more of the mercury and argon because it's got a lower um, voltage drop for, for a given uh, length of the tube. The mercury argon is just so much more forgiving for electronic supplies, it's just so much easier to drive. Um, so, there we go. And uh, initially with um, the mercury argon tubes, it takes a while, for the, particularly if the room's cold, as this one is at the moment, to get the mercury dispersed. So this tube will gradually increase in brightness, but even at that, even right now, it looks quite a bright tube, it's, uh, it looks pretty good. So that's uh, useful because these things are just readily available on eBay, you can buy them for something like two pounds or three dollars each um, and just hack them and uh, technically speaking you could push it a little bit harder you could um, you could get another capacitor which would have to be rated at least two kilovolts I think uh, let's take a look and see what that one's rated at if I can see it oh, I think that may be three kilovolts not 100% sure I'm not even sure if that's going to um, Stay in focus if I bring it up. No, I don't think it is going to stay in focus. But yes, uh, it, they're, they're neat little uh, units. But you could theoretically, you could put uh, another capacitor. You could replace those ones completely with a high voltage capacitor with, say, a rating of about, um, well, that's about 44 picofarad. You could probably go up to 100 picofarad, maybe, although don't quote me on that, and just uh, see see how hot the transistors got. If they started getting too hot, um, then just step back on that to maybe 47 or 56 uh, picofarad. But um, yeah, they're neat, very hackable.